This. Yes, we have a book, The Hometown Team, written by Steve Babineau, who took the uh, photographs, and Mike Shalen, uh, formerly of the Boston Herald Sports. So you've been a sports writer forever. Ever. All right, so I like to get backgrounds on folks. Steve, why are you a photographer? I wanted to be an athlete. I wanted to grow up. I wanted to play ball. I wanted to play hockey. I had the talent to play baseball, but I got hurt at an early age in junior and high school, blew my knee out, and it kind of messed me up. But uh, luckily, I was fooling around with a camera in high school just taking pictures and really kind of started off in the hockey business and then that led to baseball so I mean uh, well I did not expect that so you you wanted to be a baseball athlete I was a, I was a much better baseball player than I was a hockey player I didn't start playing hockey until I was like really in the eighth grade and uh, I did play two years of semi-pro baseball in a low low class league up in Sudbury Massachusetts and uh, but blew my knee out the first time as a junior and in those days they just went in and did surgery and then Kept playing and uh, kept playing hockey at the same time and blew my knee out again, the same knee, and uh, went from throwing 90 to throwing 82. And that's like throwing Which batting. Which sounds fast to me. That's like throwing batting practice. <laughs> so I played one year, one more year, I played as a shortstop, six foot four. I could cover a lot of ground, but I decided to get married after that. So I got married at a very early and age. And be a photographer. And, and be a photographer. What town did you grow up in? I grew up originally in Cambridge, Massachusetts, around Harvard University. So I got to see the Bruins practice at Harvard a lot. Uh -huh. And uh, then later on, we moved to Medford, Massachusetts. All right. So it's your turn, Mike. You're yes. a sports writer forever. Why did you become a sports writer? Well, like growing up in New York, I grew up about two or three miles from LaGuardia, Shea Stadium. And um, when I was old enough to realize that I wasn't good enough, which was about nine, or 10, <laughs> I realized, well, you got to remember too, in New York, we didn't have a lot of high school football. So with my size, I probably would have been a high school football mm -hmm. player, but I was a coward and I knew I didn't want to play football. So I just knew that there was going to be some way for me to stay involved. And I've, over the years, I've coached, I've refereed basketball, but um, I've been a sports writer and I graduated from college in 76, so I guess that counts as 40 two years. First job? What was your first job? Wow. Uh, well, I, I had done some freelance work while I was in college, believe it or not, in Wichita, Kansas. I did some work for the NHL because the Kansas City Scouts were in existence then. They are now the New Jersey Devils. They went from Kansas City to Colorado to New Jersey. <laughs> and um, I got out in 76, and my first job was a summer baseball dictationist with the Associated Press. Wow. And from there, I went to UPI the following year, doing the same thing. I got hired at the end of the season, full time. This was 78, 80. I covered the miracle of Lake Placid because I was the UPI hockey writer. And then later that year, after President Carter canceled our visas, I was supposed to go to Russia. After that, I, I got the job at the New York Post, and I was there until I moved to Boston. How did the two of you come together? How did you guys meet? You're crossing paths because you're taking a picture and you're writing about it? What? Well, I'm the, I'm the Bruins it was, photographer, it was too. dating service. Yeah, we... <laughs> <laughs> Internet dating? Yeah. I'm the Bruins photographer, it's also. This is be my 45th year as the Boston Bruins photographer. So I would always be at a game early. We're talking three hours, three and a half hours before a game. And then the first guy to walk in the press room after I've already been in here sitting would be this guy. And he just kept looking at the back of my head for a long period of time. And I kept knowing he was over there doing something. And then next thing you know, one thing led to another. And then I think he said, didn't you shoot flare baseball cards or something like that back in the day? That and was your opening line. I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, stuff up. So we just started talking about sports and, and what I had photographed. And, and I told him that, you know, I'd done FLIR baseball cards for 14 years. And, and I ended up hooking up with the Red Sox officially in 99. And, and I knew he was, he was uh, an official scorer at Fenway. I knew he was a writer. And the next thing you know, we just started throwing out ideas, talking about let's not do a book about the history of the franchise, but let's look at it more from a photographer's look, shooting pictures of these players and putting it into different categories, franchise players, star players, role players. And this is not your first book, so you guys no. knew what you were doing. We well, had I mean, an idea. I some mean, people would say we still don't. But, um, <laughs> uh, sure. um, I had done a book on Don Mattingly, uh, which was not an authorized biography, but he cooperated. I did a book with Oil Can Boyd, a pitcher in Boston. And I, the first book I did was actually with my older brother, we did a book called Out by a Step, The 100 Best Players Not in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Interesting. And that's, my goodness, that's back near the turn of the century, if you will. 
And um, so, you know, I, I, he kept bugging me. You know, he's like <laughs> Is that true? Ha hammering away. And, and well, I, I had some success with my Bruins book, you know what I mean? And I just felt that, okay, at that point it was 35 years when we first came out with it. We updated it to 38 when we won the Stanley Cup. And then I'm sitting there and I'm, I, I have all this inventory of pictures. And it's like, okay. How many pictures do you have with the Bruins and with the, oh, the million, Red Sox? Yeah. No, yeah, Hundreds no. of thousands? Millions? Yes, oh, yeah. yes. Easily, easily. There's no doubt about it, without a doubt. There's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, I just said, I, my dad said, leave something behind. You know what I mean? And so the Bruins documentation of my life with the Bruins, which is still going on, and now with the Red Sox having won three World Series, you know, I like to say that when they hired myself and my son in 99, we broke the Bambino curse. Gee, I'll take credit for it anyway. <laughs> so you, you decided to be dedicated to this book you were telling me, Steve, and you did not shoot the best I, Boston Red Sox. They won another pennant this year, of yes, course. I, we, you know, I made a decision that, uh, you know, to do this and do it right and spend the time that was needed to sort things out and put it into the categories that Mike and I had come up with, uh, I really needed to back off that year sure. before. And uh, so, and plus it wasn't getting to me my, to my property in Florida, and, you know, and, and I really wanted <laughs> to get down there and uh, hang out in the summer and focus on this. And, and uh, so, you know, we went into the, I, I went into one game this year, which was an alumni game, so it was great seeing Pedro and, and Boggsy and and Dewey Evans and stuff like that and we gave them each a book and they Bogsy was shocked that I ended up hooking on with the Red Sox because he always asked me how come you always had me posing with multiple bats and I said well that was the Fleer baseball card years and you were the best hitter in, in baseball so I mean I wanted to show you with multiple bats and any type you know and then he says you really hooked on with the Red and then I showed him the book and you know he was, they were thrilled of course who is this book for the real fan or anybody well I had somebody tell me that Every Red Sox fan should have one copy and should send two copies to every Yankee fan. <laughs> I like to that. rub it in. All right. Well, so that gets us to the book. All right. So we're going to show uh, you folks a bunch of pictures that are in this book. How did you pick the cover? Did you pick it or did the publisher pick it? Well, we had a cover picked. And it's kind of hard to put four, four decades of photography into the book. And it was a picture of Ted Williams and Kalia Stremski. Okay, my sister grew up a big Ted Williams fan, so it was inherited by me, me getting to photograph. That originally was the cover that we had selected. Which is to, our next picture. To tie it into four decades of baseball. But the publisher wanted some type of an action shot. So we got you a little... You might sell more books. That we yeah, we got a little yeah. scared because that particular year that I was putting this together, the Red Sox were making another run. They were making another run, and I got a little nervous that if they did win, and I wasn't aggressively shooting like I had been in the past, what would the cover be? So obviously they did not win, and we went back to uh, the deciding game at Fenway. That was the only time, that still is the only time they won the World Series at Fenway Park. Correct. Since 1918. So you pick the pictures. How many pictures are in this book? This, from what I'm told, is 500 pictures. Okay, 500 pictures. You don't write to every picture, no. but so did you do that from memory each picture, or what? How did you write next oh, to these pictures? Oh no, I just I just contacted the guys that I knew, that I covered, mm -hmm. and some guys that I didn't. The Red Sox helped me a little bit because we're we're giving a donation to the Red Sox Foundation. Oh, that's off awesome. the sale of the book, and so like Freddie Lynn was there. You know how they? I, I don't know if you've been to Fenway, but they they have a. a Can you believe I haven't been? Ever. Ever. Oh, well, we'll have to host. We'll have to. Yeah, I, I, it's a. I gotta do this before we, I die thing. I grew good. up in Indiana. Well, don't so. go. Don't go after you die. <laughs> the, um, good advice. Right. But so Freddie Lynn, they have a they have a retired player that waves to the crowd in the fourth inning. They acknowledge him. So they? so I waited for Freddie outside this luxury box and I talked to him for about twenty minutes. I called Bruce Hurst. I called this guy. You know, and, and it's funny because. My relationship with them is different than Steve's because right. mine was antagonistic sometimes sure. because I'm writing negative things about them. But I found that the guys that, that I contacted that I really thought hated my guts, the years kind of took care of that. Right. And they actually sounded happy to hear from me. You know, <laughs> Dwight Evans and Dennis Eckersley are, are, have written forwards for our book. I didn't always get along with Dwight Evans. I kind of always got along with Eckersley. In fact, I, I went to see the original Ghostbusters with Dennis oh Eckersley my gosh. in Pittsburgh. I was there to do a feature story on him. But it was, it was good reconnecting. Sure. And, and not every guy is profiled. And the ones that I did profile, there were some that I did profile without talking to them, just working off other books sure. and clips and stuff like that. You guys have really lived a life. 
right? <laughs> I played in the big leagues for four decades, you know what I mean? That's what people, you know, you've been around, you've been around longer than almost a player never plays four decades, you see what I'm saying? And I've, right. I've done something that I wanted to do, whether it be hockey or baseball or even the Celtics with basketball, and, and I'm still... I'm still going. You feel and, the same way, right? And he has one more ring than Tom Brady, so he's very Don't proud. Don't tell Tom. He's very proud. He won't be happy. I, I do feel the same. I, I think that. Because um, as a journalist, you know, I, I get this. We, it, yeah, all journalists. All so journalists many who aren't, you know, uh, Woodward and Bernstein, we're all underpaid. So obviously, we have to like what we do. You do it for the stories. Yeah, and um, it's just. It's just there, and when I'm not when I'm not doing it, when I'm supposed to be relaxing, I miss doing it. Yeah. You know, and um, having gone through so many different, you know, I got bought out by the Herald in in, in 2005, but I was still too young to retire, mm -hmm. so I had to basically reinvent myself and became became a freelancer, became an official scorer at Fenway, which is something I do between 35 and 40 games a year, and you know, I'm still. I'm still involved. And now, I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to be. slow down in Boston <laughs> University. He's not Boston, let you, Boston exactly. University and UMass Lowell. Now I'm shooting, Want you? I'm, yeah, I'm doing photography for those two colleges, you know, sports and stuff like that. I'm bringing the element of the post stuff, the candid stuff, the setup stuff that we do with the professional teams. They now want me to do that for them. When so. you're good, you're good. Right? Yeah. So, all right, let's continue on with the book and more pictures. All right, explain this one. So this is Roger Clemens at Winter Haven, Florida. This is the window of time, 14 years, that I shot baseball cards for Fleer. And if people know the story, Fleer came out with a baseball card set in competition with Topps. And I was the first photographer that Fleer hired when I found out that uh, they were going to get the rights to produce baseball cards. So this would be me just going up to Roger Clemens with a business card that said I was staff photographer and saying, Roger, I need a couple pictures. So I'm literally laying on the ground here in Winter Haven. I saw the blue sky. And I just said, just, just look down at me, smile. And that, ends up, that ended up being a baseball card for the Do kids baseball. still collect those? Is that still? There's only one company now, and it's Topps. And uh, it's, I, it's. Is that it's, what it used to be? Because I can't remember. It was, remember it was originally Beatles one in the cards. 50s, but then all of a sudden it exploded well, in 79, it 80. It blew up in the, in the in 80s, 80s and 90s. It was like five or six companies. Kind of leveled off. But yeah. you know, um, I, there's still something special about a baseball card. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Really so is. for me, being a kid growing up and collecting baseball cards, you see what I'm saying? And now all of a sudden, I found myself down in Lakeland, Florida that first year, and I'm looking up, Dad, I made it to the big leagues. Just and you're not, pinching just, yourself, Just right? not with a bat ball and a glove. Similar. All right, this one. This would be an all-star game in Montreal uh, where Fleer would have sent me to this game to photograph, and I just kind of brought back, I think, to the Fleer company these combo photos that were done in the 50s for Topps. When Topps was doing Warren Spahn and Johnny Sane or Phil Rizzuto and this guy, they were doing it. And I, if, you know, these, these two guys were buddies and I saw them there on the batting cage and I just said, hey, I'm with Flair. I have a question about this. Picture. Yes, sir. If it's in Montreal, why are they wearing white? It was an all-star game and it, that was just the day before practice. That would, that would have been so like they, the day. So they told them to put their white, but the game they had the grays on. Yes. Okay. Yes. This is a show. You you realize that you can just go. <laughs> Everything's to the a show. Yeah, and then you Everything can just show, a show them. It's a show. All right, this guy. This guy. That's be the another. Wade Boggs I was talking yeah. about posing with the bat. You know what I mean? Getting him to pose. He was definitely to me one of the best hitters in baseball during that window of time. I thought and uh, just try to get him into, you know, a classic pose photo. You know. Empty seats, Fenway Park. You can't do that now. If you go to their batting practice, there are fans sitting in those seats. There are 300 fans on the field oh, watching batting practice. I'm in the ballpark by myself. God, how cool is that? That's Yaz 1976, bicentennial uniform. So that would have been the first year that I was in the ballpark shooting on a legitimate credential for Baseball Digest out of Chicago. I had been doing a lot of work with Hockey Digest out of Chicago, and the editor of the Hockey Magazine was also the editor of the Baseball Magazine. So I asked him, his name was Mr. John Kunster. I said, any chance of getting into Fenway Park and shooting some baseball? Wow. And the next thing you know, I had Baseball Digest covers that first year, and that ended up, as a freelancer, that's me going as a freelancer, but it ended up leading to the FLIR baseball card project in 1979. Have both of you kept all your press credentials? No. You haven't? Because I've kept all of mine. I have, I would say I probably have 95% of them just somewhere in a drawer yeah, on a desk. Yeah, because it's just a thing. Yeah. So you, you I, have, I have all the Lake Placid stuff. Well, um, of course. Including a, a lot of memorabilia from there, but um, and the ironic part about that is that 
having covered Jim Craig at Lake Placid, my son, youngest son, wound up being a goalie at Oliver Ames High School, which was Craig's high school. And in, in the what, you know, life is a circle category, my son gets his first shutout in high school when Jim Craig was at the game. Wow. That's cool. Wow, that's, that's a pinch that, me that, moment that too, isn't it? That completes the circle. Yeah, I have oh a picture of the team. That's yeah. pretty amazing. All right, we've got another action shot. That's just me getting bored of sitting in the first base pit or of the course, third base okay. pit. And I just hate being, you know, repetitive. And if I'm shooting a game tonight and I'm shooting from the first base pit the whole game and the photographer that's on the next night is shooting, from, everything's going to look the same. So I would just make a point in the fifth inning to just go somewhere else. And this is me up behind home plate in one of these clubs at Fenway Park. And I'm just really there to get the pitcher in reality, you know, getting him coming and releasing the ball or getting a double play situation from a different angle. And all of a sudden, this play just happened at the plate. And you can clearly see that this guy is out by him. Uh, is that yeah. Mirabelli? I think that's Mirabelli. I, yeah, that's Mirabelli, I believe, yes. Yeah. Manny Ramirez, so again, I'm, on, I'm in the third base grandstand, probably 35, 40 rows back. I'm looking You're across over the top of yeah. home plate, and all of a sudden I see Manny just in there casually looking out at the field just to get a different angle. You can't get that from the first base pit. You can't get that from the third base pit because you have the pitcher's mound blocking your view. But if you're, if you're at a slight angle and elevated, it just gives it, you know, something different to look at. Right. That's Terry Francona. Terry Francona. And, and Mike, Mike Lowell. Lowell. Yep. Yep. Here's some hardware. Well, yeah. Yep. I mean, uh, I'm pretty fortunate that I have six of those puppies. Uh, three, three items here from the Red Sox. I also have a Stanley Cup ring from the Boston Bruins. Really? A just as being the photographer. A championship ring from the Boston Celtics. So the, where is it? You don't have it on. No, they're... They're, <laughs> they're under lock and key. Manchester Monarchs, Calder Cup, AHL champions of the Los Angeles Kings Farm team, and my college hockey, uh, UMass Lowell won the Hockey East Championship. So I am one up on Tom. Wow. Do you have blame? No. You just write about it. He That's just me. Write about he it. Guards, yeah, I just write about it. I've been, official, I've been an official scorer now for four world champions, but we don't work for the team. We work for Major right. League Baseball. So no, you can look I, at his I probably have to turn it down if they have this Yes, the conflict. Yes. All right, we have more bling here. Here's a, a little... Uh, that's, this is, this that's is. royalty right yeah, there. Yeah, that is. This is, would be David's like, last game, and uh, all the alumni players that he played, well, a lot of them came in from center field, and they did this, and I was in this unique position, being elevated, all the other main photographers were on the field, and all of a sudden, I just saw him pull out the cell phone, and I was looking right down, and, you know, just got that selfie thing there, and I just think that's so cool that I was able to get those three stars in one picture. And modern, in modern times. Yes. This picture is just, what's not romantic about this, if you love Fenway? Uh, you know, it's the skyline. It's, I just saw this happening. I was in the third base pit, I believe, and all of a sudden, I saw the sky starting to change colors. And I said, okay, I'm going to take the chance and go upstairs here and uh, just see what I can get here. And the key was keeping the word Fenway Park on the facade behind home plate. You got the Prudential building there and the sky was changing. And, you know, it's just, you know, Fenway Park is, what, second oldest ballpark in, in yeah. sports. And, you know, to get that from the different angles that there, there are. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I'll be sitting he there. He sees that all night long right, from, his, from his But seat. I'll be sitting there before a game and, and I will take. A picture similar to that again just with, on your with iPhone my phone, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it's just, it's just, it's just, it's it almost never gets old, fate, does right? It? Spectacular. Uh, yeah, it gets old. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Yeah, it the does. View, really? Oh, the view doesn't get old. Yeah, the right. games get old yeah. as, they, as they go four or five hours, you know, sure. into twelve thirty at night. But uh, no, it's 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 pretty cool, you know. And having co I covered the Yankees, so I I had Yankee Stadium, the old Yankee Stadium, for three three years almost, and then. To do this, and then also to cover the Bruins at the Old Garden, into the New Garden, and the Celtics at the Old Garden, into the New Garden, and I just the thing about Fenway is when I came, I've been here, I've been there 35 years now, and I said there's no way that this place is going to outlive me, and now it's mm -hmm. going to be there long after we're both gone. Right. It's amazing. Well, I kind of love that, you know, because well, you just... have to go. Well, I do. You got to walk around the, you know, the. Cr the the alleyways. I have to be in the alone hall. in the park. Yeah, I would love going to the alone. ballpark like, multi like three, four hours before a game just to walk around and just see the seats or see the hallways. Oh, yeah. and You know, just so cool. All right, we have a baseball here. Just again, just another element to just uh, fill some page with uh, something backdrop. That's in the 
That would be in the Red Sox. Yeah, that's the Red Sox uh, dugout because I can see the red uniform down in the top mm -hmm. left-hand corner there. Just happened to see it there. I think I, I repositioned the ball so I could see the you know the Major League Baseball logo. Artistic little, You know, value composition. There, yeah. And just wanted to use it as a backdrop. Same thing. So that would be my position from the first base pit. You know, I am a Nikon user, so I, I the gave, gave them the plug there. But uh, that would have been my, my position during that particular game. Look at the face on, on this guy. Kurt Schilling. Yep. Again, I'm in, I'm in with the fans behind home plate shooting just to get the delivery, the release point of the ball, the, the grunt on the face. And, uh, you know. How fast is he, did he throw a ball? He's a two in the 90s. 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 93, 94. But the thing about Kurt is that I'm, I'm a Hall of Fame voter, and Kurt's having a difficult time getting in because of his political stuff. And we're not supposed to take that into account. I vote for him, but, but human nature being what it is, right. a lot of people, including the whole state of Rhode Island, that doesn't really like Kurt Schilling these days. So it might be difficult. How many votes are there? Oh, there's, it, it varies year to year. It does. Um, and they and recently, not two or three years ago, they 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 cut out a lot of people, and mm. they cut out a lot of like 75, 80 year old men who mm -hmm. really loved the game and were and were hurt by it. Sure. I have to apply every year because I'm I'm not on the beat. Anymore. Well, you're only 39. So well, well, yeah. You're I turned 40 in <laughs> last week. I think. Sure. Yeah. All right. Somebody's cleats here. Again, we were looking for some background pictures in case we wanted to do a collage page in the book. And, you know, I, over the years, I would do stuff like this just to show an element of the game, Something whether it be a glove, right? a ball, just a bat, a couple of things hanging around, a helmet. I just would shoot this, you know. This isn't a big deal picture at this all. This is 29 is <laughs> hours of driving from Florida to get home for this game. Oh my gosh. And then being called into a meeting before this game, the deciding game, and I was asked, Babs, where do you want to be? And I had to point the option of first base pit inside, first base pit out. And then I said, I want to be out on the green monster, left field, somewhere in that range. And they all kind of looked, the guy looked at me and he said, why? I go, this is the first time we could win the World Series in Fenway Park since 1918. It's not about just the pitcher and catcher jumping into each other's so hands. Look, there, it's there about it is. winning. It's about winning in Fenway Park with the fans, the dugout, and you, in, in, the Cardinal is walking off the field here to the right. You just can't see him by home plate there. But it was just about capturing Senator Kerry's in that picture to the left, wearing like a beige jacket. The comedian Lenny Clark's in there, and I believe Eddie Vedder's in the middle there somewhere, I was told. But, I mean, it was me being in that ballpark after f so many years, looking up, saying, Uncle Lenny, we won. You know, Uncle Lenny, we won. Our dad, we won. That's a money shot right there. Thank you. That's, that's would be the frame before the actual cover How shot. How do you remember that? Okay, because you can see on the cover shot here. Oh, sure, okay. You, the catcher actually has the ball in the web of the glove in that picture there. No, this picture. Yeah. On the cover. But he's, yeah. no, he's got it in the web there, but he misses the tag as he's sliding in. He, he, he also dropped the ball. Yes. But there's one, there's one shot of the ball actually in the yep. air. I'm not sure if that's the yeah. right. That's the just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sequence. I, I shot that in a sequence. I picked up the, uh, the, the, the runner. As soon as he rounded third base, I said, okay, this is going to be a close play. And I just tracked him. Try, and then, you well, know, that's your knowledge. You know what you're doing. Shot multiple Speaking flags. of minutia, I was doing an appearance, you know, book signing thing, and there were four kids that happened to be in the audience. And this 10-year-old kid raises his hand. And he says, uh, how do you know so much? <laughs> and I said, well, actually, what, I, what it is is that I have a little teleprompter right here. My, like when the president <laughs> reads a speech, I have this little, so it's all written for me. And he's like, wow, you know. I said, do you want to see? So he comes up towards me, and I reach out my glasses. I said, here, look. He says, I don't see anything. I said, that's because they're just for me. Oh, my. <laughs> but I'm fine. But I got right. all the answers written right on the inside of my I head. love that. All right, we have a collage of photos. Killer bees. Yeah, so, I mean, that was the talk, the killer bees, the, uh, the, the guy's names all ending in, within B, and, and I just felt that that was my phasing out, getting away from the team, but these were the new kids on the block, I guess is what I'll say. So I really just felt that rather than give them each their own, section let's just put something together in a collage Good so that's idea. a two-page spread in the book that's a great shot just me in the ballpark bright and early just hanging out just saying okay walking walking around and just shooting something different you know and this is a great shot the the, the last one again it's 
I that's walked the, that's the place places. you want to walk around yes. by yourself. When I'm by myself. All yeah. the dank yeah. and it, it looks the same as it did in 1937. But, I, but yeah. see, I love that. Yeah. So, um, final questions to you. Have you ever made a lot of money off of one of your pictures? No. No, it's no. Do you think you should have made a lot of money off of one of your pictures? You know. Did you get, get one that nobody got? Well, in baseball, I would say probably, you know, that, 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 that picture you saw of uh, Fenway Park winning with, is, a, is a cool shot. And I really yeah. haven't seen that published anywhere. I really have not seen that published anywhere. And Maybe. you own the rights to that because you took it? I own the rights to that photo. All right, so anybody hears that, he owns the rights. Best story you ever wrote or most memorable story you ever Lake wrote? Lake Placid, without a Lake doubt. Lake Placid. Without a doubt. And I, working for a wire service um, at the time, we didn't have computers, and I'm literally on the phone with somebody at the office dictating off the top of my head. And if you remember what happened in the game against Russia, we were losing three to two. Mm -hmm. So I had, to write, I had to start writing this story about how we gave them all that they could handle, blah, blah, blah. But you know the Russians are going to win. Then we tied the game, so now you scrap what you already done, and now you're in a tie game, but you know the Russians are going to win. <laughs> and then we go ahead. Americans go ahead. Now I'm sitting on the biggest story, in my opinion, the biggest sports story of all time. I don't care what anybody says. I don't says. know that I disagree. Well, I still get goosebumps. And now right? I start dictating and dictating, but you know the Russians are going to come back, right? <laughs> so I'm pulling stuff out of my head that I didn't even, you know, like if it was written inside my, I didn't even wear glasses then. And, and the guy in the back, Mike Tully, who's still a friend of mine, and he's going, come on, baby, you're cooking, come on. Come. And, um, you know, when Al Michaels yelled, do you believe in miracles? He presses a button, and we had 1,800 words on the wire within 30 seconds. Oh, all my gosh. All, all around the world. Unbelievable. Right. And so I need to thank both of you for coming on. The book is The Hometown Team. Steve Babineau and Mike Shalin, thank you so much for being here, and lots of luck with the book. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Spend all night kissing and it was right here, then who else is mixing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I'm a piece of the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep locked in the grocery store of my mind. Just the same time, skip right ahead to the nice ride.